So, you're securing an objective, like taking the shield generators out on a flagship and need to make an escape. Or perhaps you're chasing an enemy down and their ally has arrived to get you off his or hers tail. Maybe you're playing a class that focuses on objectives like bomber or support and you're being hyper-focused on by the enemy. All these situations lead to attempting to avoid fire and shake off the enemy. You're trying to survive, get back to your teammates or the resupply area. It can be tricky. If you're not an interceptor, it's not like you can instantly drift 180 degrees towards the enemy, especially if you're a statistically slower support or running a reinforced hull as a bomber. Dying in squadrons also has a massive effect on the morale meter, even if you're not taking enemies down. Not dying is already a huge help to your team, so surviving incoming fire is absolutely imperative to the team as a whole, which is why in today's video, we'll be exploring three huge things you need to do to help increase your survivability when you're under fire in Star Wars squadrons. But before we get into it, I wanted to drop you guys my question of the day, which is what faction do you enjoy gameplay wise? So don't give me your favorite faction. Give me your favorite faction to play gameplay wise. For instance, I actually enjoy playing the Rebels more now than I did when I started, mostly because the Imperial Star Destroyer's shield generators are easier to identify and hit, as well as knowing exactly how to utilize my shields more effectively now. But I will say the Empire is generally better performing faction overall for now. When the average skill ceiling rises, that will be up for debate. But what is your favorite faction gameplay wise? Let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments down below. Also, are you looking for people to team up with in squadrons? If you are, be sure to join our Discord. We have chat rooms dedicated to squadrons teams, and we have a really tight-knit community that is everything about Star Wars and the X-Crew. So if you want in on something like that, hit that link in the pinned comment or description. But with that out of the way, let's dive right into the video. Number 1. Overloading Shields and Engines Whilst many players comfortably overload their power into engines for better mobility around the map, many Rebel and support players overlook one thing overloading shields. Whilst this isn't an entire point, I had to start off with this. You're able to double up your shield's durability to both front and back of your starfighter, and the decay on overloading of shields is much slower than the decay of your speed boosting and firepower. So, if you've just been redeployed, absolutely out of the way of incoming fire, or perhaps sitting in the resupply bay, absolutely slam your power into shields, as they can really last. But let's get into the actual methods of utilizing both shields and engines to get out of enemy fire. First, immediately analyze your incoming damage. In the center of the screen, you'll be able to see indicators as to where the last bit of damage was caused from, and then prioritize your shields accordingly. In 99% of cases against other players, you're likely wanting to put them in the back, since enemy players have an easier time tracking you when behind you rather than the front or side of you. When attacking a raider, you're also going to be wanting to put your power to shields on the front of your vessel instead. So, when being chased, you need to know when the appropriate time to swap power from shields to engines. When you're taking incoming fire, your engines are a priority. Increased speed and sharper turns will always make laser targeting difficult. And when you take a sharp turn, you need to judge if that has given you enough time to avoid incoming fire to recharge your shields. When the enemy still has a lock on you, but is unable to fire due to environment being in the way, that is when you need those few moments in shields to essentially regain health and survivability, at least enough to get you back to your frigates or capital ship. One thing you should really avoid is straightening up. I understand that theoretically boosting in a straight line will help you get further away from the enemy, but you become super easy to hit. So you need to make a judgment call on if boosting is enough to help you reach your frigates or your capital ship safely. Something to note though, you can recharge your shields when boosting. So if you are going to boost, make sure that energy is in shields, not speed. As for the Empire faction players, unless you're the TIE Reaper, you're going to need to rely more on your increased maneuverability, so you really shouldn't be straightening up in that case, as you're much more vulnerable and damage intake will always be permanent until you can resupply or self-repair. But with all this talk about maneuverability, let's move on to our second, more harder to pull off method to surviving against enemy firepower. Number two, hugging environment. What I mean by hugging the environment is basically traveling along the surface of a rock or building very closely and attempting to turn around it as fast and smoothly as possible. The three reasons you want to do this are one, it keeps you constantly turning and forces the enemy to constantly refocus his or hers reticle and sometimes they might not be able to fully turn and look at you as they might crash into the environment itself. Two, it allows you to briefly keep out of their view despite locking onto you, meaning that you have time 
time to build boost or regenerate shields. Three, it puts them at risk of crashing into the environment themselves if they want to perform tighter turns to keep on your tail. This is quite difficult to pull off as it means you have to take risky moves whilst also not crashing into the environment and taking further damage. Unfortunately, you will have to learn this, so there could be times where you'll crash yourself as the enemy is chasing you. But if you wish, take some time to play some AI unranked games and attempt to follow along the rubble, rocks and buildings of some of the maps. Begin slow and then practice going faster and faster. Of course, when hugging these environments, you don't want to be going around in circles. You're at risk of other enemies coming to help finish the job. You want to guide yourself around these rocks as you slowly move closer back to your side of the map. However, if that is not an option, the third and final bit of advice should help you. And finally, free pinging for help. This is definitely one feature that is overlooked the most, even when playing on your own with a team of four. After finally mastering the two objectives mentioned earlier, in most cases, you should be able to survive long enough to ping for help from your allies. One of the biggest reasons you want to increase your survivability is so that your allies have enough time to come in, distract the enemy and help you make your escape. This method is called Target My Attacker and can be performed on Xbox controllers by simply double tapping A to highlight the attacker and then pressing Y to ping them to all your allies. For PS4, it's double tap X and then triangle. For PC, it's pressing G and then B. If it's a situation where you're the ally and you're coming to help your teammate, you can confirm that you're coming to help by double tapping Y for Xbox, double tapping triangle for PS4 and B for PC. Even if you're in Discord comms, this is absolutely a must to learn and master as it can convey information effectively and super fast. So learn this now. But other than that, that does conclude our tips on surviving longer in Star Wars Squadrons. What is your thoughts on the tips? Did you know them already or did you learn something new today? Let me know all your thoughts on that as well as our question of the day, which is what faction do you enjoy gameplay wise? Shoot all your opinions in the comments down below. But other than that, I've been Charlie, you've been watching X2 and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.